Sir Ran Abhishek, uh, going to present on code IS 2750-1964, Specification of Steel Scaffoldings. Here we go. So, scaffolding is a temporary platform used to elevate and support workers and materials during construction, repair work, or cleaning work of a structure. This Indian standard was adopted by the Indian Standards Institution on 27th May 1964 and it has been approved by the Building Division Council. So, why do people prefer steel scaffoldings? Though it is costly, it is available in different size and designs. It offers more resistance, it, it has eye carrying capacity and it provides steady and strong platform. It has good durability and it is easy to assemble and dismantle. So, it lays down the requirements for materials, fabrication and performance of steel scaffoldings used in normal construction. It does not include suspended or slung scaffoldings and it does not include the scaffoldings that are made with any other material other than steel. So types of steel scaffoldings uh, mentioned in the code books are of four types. First, independent scaffoldings. These are most commonly used type. This consists of double row of standard with each row parallel to the building. And second one, individual component type scaffolds. As we said before, independent scaffoldings consisting of assembly of individual tubes and fittings are known as individual component type scaffoldings. So the third one is potlock scaffold. So potlocks are holes that are made in the walls of the structure to receive the ends of the poles or beams to support the scaffolding. Potlock holes may extend through a wall to provide staging on both sides of the wall. And the fourth one is unit frame type scaffold. So in this type, independent of potlock scaffold consisting of an assembly of prefabricated frames, suitably connected, or fitted, and used in combination with or without individual tubes. Steel tubes for individual component type uh, scaffolds shall be uh, heavy class welded or steamless tubes of diameter 40 mm as mentioned in IS 1161-1963 uh, as said as specification for steel tubes for structural purpose. In steel fittings, all fittings shall be manufactured from steel which is analyzed in accordance with different methods of chemical analysis mentioned in code IS-228-1969. For wrought iron, C-15 or C-20 of IS-1570-1961 is referred. Steel structures and bars uh, shall conform to IS code uh, 226-1962 uh, and rivet bars shall conform to IS 148-1957, which are the specification mentioned for rivet bars for structural purpose. Bowls and nuts of shape, hexagonal, square and round header uh, should conform to the requirement as stated in IS 1362-1962, uh, as stated as dimension for screw heads for general purpose, and IS 1367 and 1961, the technical supply conditions for the threaded fasteners. So right angle coupler. So right angle coupler is a load bearing coupler which connects the scaffold at right angles. The couplers that pass the distortion and either rotation or slip test will be certified for usage. Distortion test. In this test, coupler is connected, uh, connecting an horizontal and vertical tube in a right angle. When three ton load is applied on the horizontal tube. When three ton load is applied on the horizontal tube, it should prevent slipping, uh, slipping on a vertical end. In rot rotation test, a coupler will be fitted to a ledger, shall have a tube fitted horizontally as a cantilever at right angles. So the cantilever's length will be approximately 1.2 meters. So uh, there will be a load, load will be applied in an increasing manner till the turning moment exerted exceeds 3.2 kilogram per centimeter. 
in slip test it is as similar as distortion test here the two tubes horizontal and vertical are connected at the right angle and a load of 1.25 newton is applied on the horizontal tube but here the coupler can rotate but not exceeding 10 degree from the horizontal tube so fuel couplers are similar to that of right angle couplers but these couplers are used to connect scaffolding poles at any angle fuel couplers are used for adding diagonal bracing to a scaffold structure and are adjustable to fit towers of any size and these should pass distortion test and slip test fuel couplers are nothing but non load bearing fitting that connects two scaffold tubes at 90 degree as shown in this figure they should be used in horizontal for connecting transoms and ledges footlock scaffolding footlock scaffolds use the wall of the building that's being built as a support in conjunction with standards to uphold the outer scaffold deck it consists of a single row of standards with a single ledger the standards are vertical scaffolds that are provided to transfer the load to the foundation these wood blocks should be constructed uh, such that it conforms the requirement as mentioned in 3.1.1 or to be designed and constructed as to provide at least uh, equal in resistance to bending shearing and deflection a fitting other than putlock coupler also can be provided for connecting putlock to a tube and uh, it should comply the requirement of 7.3.6 of putlock couplers and putlock end should have a even bearing surface of 7.5 m long and 5 cm wide from the end of the horizontal tube so the base plate shall have a level surface of at least 15 cross 15 cm of equivalent area concentric with the axis of the shank to which it shall be securely attached if the base plate is of mild steel its thickness should not be less than 5 mm for other metal it should have sufficient thickness to provide an equal strength it shall be provided with not less than 2 holes 6 mm in diameter which is located diametrically opposite at a distance of not less than 5 cm from the center of the base plate and not less than 20 mm from the edge of the base plate next joint pins joint pins should be self centering so that both the tubes uh, which connect which is connected uh, are of equal length and it is achieved by the mean of angle of angular projection encircling the joint pins at the midpoint and each pivot of the joint pin shall not exceed less than 75 mm on the internal surface of any tube and it should have a cross sectional area that should not be less than 80 percentage of any steel tube level pin is an adjustable clamp that is horizontally across an opening in the wall and it's used to hold the scaffolding against the wall the bearing surface at the end of the level pin should be a minimum width of 48 mm the adjustable portion of the level pin should be designed in such a manner that when a load acts the adjustment will not be altered or even by vibration so other alternatives for steel scaffoldings or access towers and scissor lift as a access towers are highly useful alternative to ladders and scaffoldings when there is lot of work to be done at heights and the work platform offers a much safer environment to work and uh, and they are self supporting too likewise a scissor lift it is a mission as shown in this figure uh, that is used to move the personnel and equipment in the vertical direction and these lifts can handle any application that would normally require a ladder tower or scaffolding and other uh, technology uh, that is driving change is reality capture this technology creates 3d models from photographs or laser scans to enable more accurate and precise modeling of scaffolding designs the scaffold designers can generate the scaffold design and then they place it with the reality capture to see how it works and so this process reduces the scaffold modification reworking waste and inefficiency thank you